Hey, my name is Matt Willie, and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about how to be successful in reading the entire Bible in one year. So today I have three tips for you. I just finished a one year plan myself and these are three things that I think will make you successful in actually finishing a, a one year uh, Bible reading plan. Uh, now there's lots of different plans out there and there's many different things uh, that you should consider when choosing a plan. You know, today is day one of uh, starting that, you know, we're January one. And so a lot of people are focused on, on doing this Bible plan, reading it, um, and getting the most out of their walk with Christ. And the one way to, one way to do that is to actually cover all the things that God has wrote, written for us in the book, uh, in the Bible, and us going through it and learning and applying that to our lives. <clears throat> and so it's a good goal to go through. If you've never done it, I highly encourage you to do reading the Bible through the whole year. Uh, the first thing that I would say is choose the right plan. Um, <clears throat> there's many plans in the Bible app. Uh, you can go through there. There's many ways to navigate it. And choosing the right plan is going to help you be successful. You know, uh, last year, my church, we started a church-wide Bible reading plan. And after a few days, uh, it, just wasn't, um, it just wasn't working for me. And so it, it was just the way that the Bible plan laid it out. Um, not that there was anything wrong to plan. A lot of people were able to accomplish it, and it was really neat to, to cover it with some people. Uh, but I preferred to read each uh, book of the Bible um, all together. There's some books that you know you may prefer to cover different accounts of the Bible uh, in one setting. So like when we started that one, it was G Genesis 1, John 1, Psalms 1, something like that. Um, and so, and then the next day would be two, two, and two chapters, two of each of those. Uh, but I prefer to go Genesis one through fifty all the way through, uh, and then move on to another book. Plan that I did, uh, I really enjoyed because it was like an Old Testament followed by a New Testament, and then you'd have like a Psalm or something every every day thrown in there. A few times it was um, Isaiah or Proverbs, and you'd work your way through some of those um, other poetic books. Uh, in the midst of reading Genesis or First Kings or whatever. Um, so my first tip for you would be choosing the right plan. My second point is to read the real Bible. There's so many things in here and that are just, they just come off the page at you. And when you read the Bible, to me, it feels like I'm slowing down, I'm taking my time and building my relationship with God and actually um, meditating on what he's saying and, and there's certain things that when you read the Bible physically like they just grab you different than listening to them and all that I don't want to negate listening but if you can read um, and you have time to do that do it but whatever's going to work for you you know get in there and get the word and get it going in your spirit and in your heart and in your mind and learning and gleaning from it like there were some times that I did utilize uh, the Bible reading plans uh, that I was going through the audible, uh, the audio version, where it would actually read to me. Um, you know, sometimes going through Leviticus was a little tough, but I could put, put in my headphones and all that. But I will say that the whole year, I can definitely pinpoint the times that I was getting more out of it, and that was when I was reading the hard physical Bible. Um, it just to me is something that that it's so much more enjoyable when you can get there and see what the words are and take your time and slow down a little bit. Remember, we're not reading to just check the mark off and say, hey, I read the Bible through the year. I mean, it's something that that is, uh, it's, it's a good goal to go for, but it's not necessarily reading it to check it off the list. You wanna read this in order to apply it to your life. Um, there's so many benefits from reading God's word. And so, Read the Word. Read the actual physical Bible. You will get more out of this plan. Sit down and do it. Carve out time. It doesn't take long. It's like 15 to 20 minutes a day. And my third point is it's okay if you fall behind. Don't let one or two days knock you off of an entire year plan. You know, there's going to be days when you go on vacation or you're traveling. Um, this past year, there were several times where my family and I, we went on vacations together. And just the travel days alone, didn't allow us to didn't allow me to read the actual Bible now, I could have listened to it and some days I did but at the same time it's okay if you get off it's okay if you get sick and you're like man I can't do anything you know um, I would encourage you to try your best to stay on like I said it's only 15 20 minutes a day 
and and you're going to get so much out of spending time with God every day and meditating on His Word. And there were so many times when I read the Bible and it was exactly what I needed to hear for that day or exactly what I needed to get in my spirit to go through that season. And But it's okay if you fall behind. You know, God's not sitting here like taking attendance and, and doing all that. It's a real relationship. You know, it's a real relationship that you're having with somebody that's actually real. And so just like having a relationship with my wife, sometimes we're very intentional about our time and, and engaging. And, and, you know, there's deep times where we're, we're growing our relationship in, in mass amounts. And then there's other days where it's just kind of like, hey, we're getting through. We're feeding the kids. We're going to work. We're, do, we're doing all that, all the things that we need to do. And not necessarily big digs at our, our marriage or anything like that, big dig into our marriage. Um, <clears throat> but you just get more out of it. So, uh, but it's okay. If you get back, you know, there are certain times uh, in, in the reading plan that I was in, it ended up only being 349 or 350 days. So there's 15 days built in there. Uh, not to mention that there are several devotional days and reflective days built in to the reading plan. So when when you're reading, it's not actually 365 days. So don't let that, um, you know, scare you off. You can always get caught up and finish within, you know, the calendar January 1 to December 31st. Um, it's okay if you get behind. Try to keep up and, and you'll make it. Now wait, we weren't done. I've got a bonus tip for you. And that is do this reading plan with somebody else. You know, earlier in the video, I mentioned reading this with my church and it was so amazing to see all the different comments and things that I wasn't seeing in uh, or being reminded of while reading a certain scripture uh, or verse or chapter and, and seeing what other people were going through and how the word was inspiring them. It inspired me to know that this word is so good, it's not just for me, it's for everybody else too. And so read it with somebody. My spouse and I went through this uh, reading plan together and it was cool to be able to talk about what we were going through. and, and wow, I didn't see that. Or, hey, I thought this was interesting. Didn't you? And there's, so it was really good. I, you know, I, I would recommend going through it with somebody else, maybe a friend, maybe somebody who's wanting to dig deeper as well. Um, but definitely go through it together. So there you have it, my three tips and a bonus tip for going through the Bible in 365 days. Remember, choose a plan that's going to work for you. Read your physical Bible. It's okay if you get behind and try to do it with somebody else. All right, guys, thanks for checking it out. Make sure you like, uh, comment, like, and subscribe. We'll talk to you later.